Howdy folks, welcome back to Boondockery. Today I'm going to introduce everyone to the newest and hottest piece of military surplus equipment on the market. It is the Mystery Ranch Thor 3 Pack. Before I get in with the video, just a few little clerical things I need to take care of first. One of which, I usually wait till the very end of the video to do a lot of things like wrapping things up, reminding you about particular things and stuff like that. Well, it's come to my attention that because my videos are a little more in-depth, a lot more detailed, they take a little more time. A lot of people aren't that patient. So once they get the meat of the matter, they're done. They don't want to see the end of it. I understand it. I appreciate that. So I'm going to sneak it in right now. First of all, if you like the content that I've been producing, please subscribe. If you like the vid this particular video, click like. If you're subscribing and you do want to stay up to date on what I'm producing, click that notifications bell. I absolutely love the comments. If you have any comments to share, good, bad, indifferent, share them below. It helps me and it also helps the, uh, the viewers of the video. I know right now there's been a lot of correspondence between uh, people that are making comments and they're learning from each other. It's a fantastic uh, opportunity we have with this platform to be able to do that. So again, like, subscribe, notifications bell, comment. If you can do those things, that would be fantastic. Definitely helps that YouTube algorithm. Now, I mentioned at the end of a couple of my videos, and because it was at the end, I think a lot of people didn't see them, and that's okay. I'm telling you now, it's all right. On my actual YouTube channel page, there's a section that reads discussion. I am going to start posting things in that discussion section, and I already did uh, post one on uh, wild camp caches and that gives everyone an opportunity to be part of the conversation to be part of the discussion and I know what I know and that is what it is it could be limited it could be vast it's all up to you now when I have X amount of information that's all that I have I can move forward with that however when you help provide information for me. Sometimes it validates what I'm, I'm doing, what I'm thinking about. Sometimes it's something completely brand new I haven't thought of. That helps me out quite a bit. And by getting all of this information stewing around in a discussion, it's going to make my videos much more interesting. It's going to make my time in the woods much more enjoyable. So if you would um, happen to be interested, and participating in any discussions, that's where you're going to find it, on my YouTube channel page under the section Discussions. The Thor 3 is a very uniquely designed pack. It was built for one purpose and one purpose only, and that was to carry and house a IED jamming device utilized extensively in Afghanistan in Iraq. Now if you were to do a Google search for the Thor 3 pack, you will find it everywhere. And I do mean everywhere. There are Eastern European countries that are selling this pack as well. As a matter of fact, the only video on YouTube I could find was in Russian. So it's very widely distributed. And the reason being is because our presence in the Middle East has been drastically and dramatically, and I thank God for that, drawn down. And the necessity for these packs pretty much went out the window. The original idea was to have one of these jammers with every single squad and they're you know, performing their missions in the Middle East. 
And before I get into all the details and everything about this pack, every place that I've seen it online is selling it brand new in the wrapper. And that's the way I received this one. As a matter of fact, I left the, uh, the tags on it specifically so you could see that, yes, this was a brand new pack. Also, you might be curious. John, are there a lot of IEDs in southeastern Ohio? No, there's not. The reason I purchased this pack is because since I discovered my secret fun spot and I determined that I would be placing caches with resupply and emergency items in my secret fun spot, I realized that I needed a load hauler or a pack frame in order to do that mission. When I saw this and I saw the pictures of it, in my mind, this was sort of a possible reimagination or type of pack like the Mystery Ranch Crew Cab, which is a purpose built load hauler. And considering that the Mystery Ranch Crew Cab in Multicam retails for $650. The price I got this for on an auction on eBay was about, it was less than a third of that. I, I paid right around $200 with shipping on the auction. And uh, I'll talk more about um, other price ranges here in a few when I start going over the specifications of the pack. Now, this was purchased with an idea in mind. And the idea was to use it differently than that it was originally designed to be used. So, it's going to perform the task okay, maybe not to the degree that I wanted, and there might be some modifications I may need to make for it. But by the time that I'm finished with the, the, the walkthrough, uh, introducing you to all the features of this pack, when you see uh, the price range for these and the fact that just about every single one of them on the market that I have seen are brand new. This might be something you would consider adding to your kit, especially if you have uh, small to medium loads that you would like to take out into uh, the forest with you, out in the wilderness with you. Uh, it could be as simple as a large amount of camera equipment for someone that really loves to get out and do some hardcore video or hardcore photography in the wilderness. Um, if you want to use it uh, as a light to medium uh, game pack, that could be uh, perfectly fine. Um, you wouldn't be able to get nearly as much in this as you would a purpose-built uh, game load carrier, but you could get quite a bit. I'll go ahead and show you the features and tell you the specifications. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through all the specs and all the uh, general information about the pack first, and then I'll give you a walkthrough. All the fabric is 500D Kodora uh, nylon, multicam. Uh, it has PALS, aka Molly, webbing all over the place on this thing, and I'll point all those out as we go over the pack. It has the patented uh, Y-Zip, 3-Zip locking system. Uh, the shoulder straps have quick release features on them. Uh, really great feature if you need to ground your pack really quick right down through here. And um, comes off lickety split. It has a sternum strap on the um, main shoulder straps. It also has load adjustment straps up at the top, which is an absolutely must, in my humble opinion, for any backpack. Like I said, there's Molly uh, systems all over the pack, including the waist belt. There's uh, all kinds of uh, Molly back here for water bottles, what have you. A very nice padded uh, side adjusting, which is a new feature. I don't really know how well I like it, but it has a side adjustment uh, strap. 
and it can accommodate a waist size of 30 inches through 50 inches. That's 76 centimeters through 127 centimeters. Also, um, the, the, the pack uh, is waterproof. All of the zips are waterproof. And again, that's, you know, I don't think anything's ever really waterproof. I think it can be greatly water resistant. Uh, the, the weight of the pack is eight pounds and it's 3.6 kilograms. It has 1,400 1, cubic in inches of storage. That's in the main compartment and this section down here, uh, which is only 23 liters. So it's, it's a fairly small um, area to carry necessities. But if you're using it primarily as a load hauler, you probably wouldn't be using a whole lot of this type of space anyway, just for necessities. It's 23.5 inches tall by 14 inches wide, which is 59.7 centimeters tall and 35.6 centimeters wide. It's classified as a medium pack. Um, the yoke, all the ones I have seen are medium sized. Um, as far as I know, they come in different sizes. I know that Mystery Ranch uh, sells almost all of their uh, yoke systems and pack systems that range from extra small all the way up to extra extra large. So if by the time you're finished watching this, you think this is something you might want to pick up, you might really want to pay attention to the size. Now, like I said, this was used by uh, EOD teams and it housed an IED jammer right in here. Now, the price I paid for mine was right around $200. And, you know, I, I thought I got a really great deal. That was including shipping and everything. But for the most part, the price ranges I'm looking at on um, online range anywhere from between $250 to $525, which is the equivalent of 176 pounds through 370 pounds. And when I'm looking at this as a load hauler, I have to keep in mind that this was not designed as a load hauler. However, I'm going to be able to use it for a medium load hauler. The crew cab that Mystery Ranch sells retails for $650, which is 458 pounds. That is all pretty much the uh, specifications. Let's take a closer look at the pack. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the main storage compartments. And I guess now that since I'm finally getting a chance to share this with you, I can remove the tag. And like I said, it is Mystery Ranch, 100% authentic Mystery Ranch gear. And um, for the price, anything from Mystery Ranch that's this size, this complex, for the price that I purchased it for is phenomenal. The main compartment, uh, has the patented Y-Zip system, locking system, which is really unique in that it has the waterproof uh, seal here, again waterproof, but when the zips are completely closed in the top portion of the wall, it covers up a gusset that's on the inside which would prevent any water from spraying up on the inside. Another nice thing about any of these zips that have the cordage on them, I learned a little thing from my buddy Jamie Booth on how to lock those, and they will not come undone unless you want them undone. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. It does have, you know, a decent amount of room uh, pretty much um, you know, like a day pack would have. And inside are two aluminum uh, stays. These aluminum stays are designed to go on the actual device that jams the IEDs. What it does is it keeps a, a, a amount of space between the pack compartment and the radio itself to keep it from overheating. I might be able to use these for something later on down the road. 
They are anodized and they look, appear to be like a copper or coyote color. We also have an inside pouch here that could be used for a hydration system. However, there is no neoprene uh, opening for the hose to go out of. There is a loop here that you could run a hose through, but you would have to actually open the pack's top access to be able to do that. Right there. Now, while we're in this nice location, now, of course, Mystery Ranch isn't cool enough to actually provide a follow me patch. But as soon as I got it, any one of my packs that have Velcro, it's got to have a follow me patch on it. You have a small little accessory pocket up here that you can put items in. It's got a mesh back, so when you open it up, you can see what is actually in it. Again, another uh, accessory that comes with this. This is a strap system to attach this to your body armor. And this is quite robust, and I know right now I will be able to use this in a lot of different capacities. And it also has the quick disconnect that the shoulder straps have. These things are very robust and will definitely keep everything together until you want to separate it. Made of, uh, This feels like it's made of either uh, very high quality aluminum or steel. But that you know came right in the pocket the way I received it. This thing. again, the top little pocket on the top flap. Move this around. Oh, great. Here's a illustration that shows exactly how the uh, sternum strap works with body armor. And this is laminated. I think this is pretty cool. This is laminated, so you can actually keep this with your pack just in case you forget how to put it together. It's like my wolf pack. My wolf pack is a transformer. It can transform into so many different variations, I can't remember how to do them all. So I always have a laminated um, instruction guide on how to do all of those items. Now, the bottom section is odd. And the reason it's odd is because this was never designed to carry anything other than the battery and specific uh, accessories for the IED jammer. It is uh, padded with um, some type of like a, a, a neoprene in the top. It's very, it's rigid. It's almost like the same type of material you would have for a rigid sleeping mat. It's an okay size, and there's another one of the mat things that separate the top compartment from the bottom compartment. The bottom compartment has the same type of padding on the bottom. It has two elasticized straps in here that have been rubberized to hold into place whatever it is it was designed to hold into place. That opens up all the way so you can access whatever that would be. Now the top section also has a neoprene opening to the exterior that is designed specifically, let's see if you can see this, specifically for wires and cables that lead from the battery pack to the device. On the exterior of the bottom, you have two rows of molly webbing. On the front, we have four rows of molly webbing. Each one of these would be perfectly acceptable for uh, a magazine pouch sized um, pouch. And so you could definitely expand the amount of space that you carry in for accessories or must have items uh, when you go out just by adding them on the front and also on the side. There are three rows on the sides and that's both sides. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual space designed to carry the load. As I said, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the space actually designed to carry the load. 
primarily where the device originally went. There is four, excuse me, there are four straps, two on either side, that hold the main sides up into position where they need to be. There is also a rigid panel that's hinged in the center, very rigid. I believe this was uh, designed to be a rain shield uh, to keep uh, the top portion of the jamming device from getting direct rain. And it is attached with two buckles. So in this area, we have a ton of molly webbing. It looks to me as though we have one, two, three, four, four rows of molly webbing. And you have two buckles with straps that are designed to go around that device. These straps are designed specifically to go around that device. And that device is somewhat small as far as the electronic device goes. So you might have a difficult time um, getting this around any decent sized items that you may want to haul. So it doesn't expand very far. However, it would be very easy to add on more webbing, which I just happen to have a roll. Imagine that. Uh, I actually have a roll to where I can expand this out to where it can wrap around and hold something very large. I have a, a hard case that I'm going to show you how I put that in that will go around just fine. And if by any chance I were to have a larger one, I could expand uh, the length of these straps a decent amount to accommodate whatever I want. Now, as you can see, we have a space on the floor of this area that appears to me to be approximately eight inches. So that tells me that I've got at least a minimum of eight inches. And with the straps uh, holding the sides together, I could probably expand that out to about 10 inches to 12 inches if I need to. And it really looks like that could definitely be feasible with the length of the side straps. I could probably carry a, a fairly large object in here. However, if I want to utilize um, the top section here to buckle in, that's going to limit me again. Uh, I could carry something like a ham in there that's uh, nice and rounded. However, um, if I have something that is symmetrical and large, like a large ammo can or a large hard box, uh, the buckles aren't going to touch. Again, I have extra buckles and I have extra straps that I could very easily accommodate. At least, uh, it looks like I could still have the hard panel in place and maybe two or three inches, but if need be, hard panel could be here and I could expand that out quite a distance more. On the interior, it's perfectly flat and smooth. There's a hard panel in the back of the main compartment made out of the same material that the top protective panel is made out of. And there is no adjustability whatsoever with these areas. They are completely sewn in. There is a pocket that goes down through here. I do not know what that was designed for. Uh, it's definitely um, not bellowed enough to accommodate any type of hydration system. However, if you have maps or anything like that, this pocket would be absolutely perfect for that. We're going to take a closer look at this top section here. It was a huge consideration for this pack to be able to accommodate any type of wires, cables, straps, what have you, and to keep those in place. That is prevalent throughout the entire design. These could very easily be used for other things. And it all depends on your creativity. Uh, I could very easily see um, a hydration hose coming through this to keep it out of the way. 
Um, you could use these items here to put extra uh, cordage, uh, rope, what have you, to put in here that you could use in a multitude of different ways just to hold it in position and have it at the ready whenever you needed it. Now let's look at the harness system. The straps are again absolutely incredibly made. Uh, Mystery Ranch always does an amazing job with those. They are very thick and padded. That is very easily an inch, inch and a quarter. Uh, it is a soft neoprene type uh, padding. It's not at all rigid. And nice ventilation uh, mesh to keep that much more cooler on your shoulders. And also that mesh goes throughout the entire uh, back panel. The back panel is rigid and it is adjustable. Um, I, I don't know exactly how far you can adjust this, uh, but it is fully adjustable. It has load adjustment straps, which I've said it time and time again whenever I talk about packs, that load adjustment straps are the game changer with military backpacks. It literally feels as if you were having 20 pounds lifted from your load when you adjust these, pull them, cinch them all the way down once you put those on. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. It has a rigid um, board frame that goes through. It's got a nice curvature that would line up with your back very well. And that's what you would use to slide down inside. You pull this out, slide that down inside. That would break the Velcro so you can slide it up or slide it back down however you need to. And then once you have the adjustments made for the height of your shoulder straps, then you'd slide the hard panel back in, close that back up, and you're good to go. Like I said, this pack was designed with the whole idea of retaining cables, wires, anything that was necessary for the original IED jamming device that they designed. Again, these would be great for hydration uh, hoses. And this device here, or this section here, looks like it was purpose built for a very specific type of um, probably a switch or a sensor or something like that. But this right here, I don't know what you could necessarily, like if you had a compass, a small compass you wanted to put in there, wanted to keep that uh, close by, the Velcro is already there. Uh, if you have no need for it, that would be very easily removed. Sternum straps, fully adjustable. They have nice locking system on these ladder locks, so you can slide them up or down wherever you need those and it will lock into position. It, it appears to me to be a, a one inch, that could possibly be three quarter inch webbing. They have a combination of steel hardware and plastic hardware, steel hardware here, this D-ring here, and quick disconnect straps. Now, the adjustments for the pack, your pack straps, they are on the side, very close to the back of the pack. When I first tried this on, because unfortunately I've gained weight over the past year, I found this to be a little difficult to adjust. And um, I'm certain that when I lose weight or someone of a lower frame than mine, this wouldn't be any problem at all. But I, I, I found myself having to really reach behind my, my, uh, my back in order to get that fully adjusted. That's the shoulder straps. Now, the waist pads. These are very nice. Uh, I would say those are thicker than the shoulder straps by just a little bit. And um, again, nicely ventilated with the mesh. This feature, I don't know how I feel about it. This, I've seen this feature quite a bit on commercial packs. And it is a side adjustment, whereas normally my adjustments for the waist belt had already always been up by the buckle always been up by the buckle. Now it's back here and instead of pulling it back to adjust it, you pull it forward. Pull it forward to adjust it. 
Don't know how I feel about that either. Again, <laughs> this is designed for sol soldiers and Marines that are very fit and um, not quite so uh, blessed around the waistline as I am. You have a section here that would be more than sufficient enough to accommodate hydration pouches for water bottles, even extra magazine pouches, accessory pouches, what have you. It is a two inch belt, which is, I prefer the, uh, the wider belts as opposed to the thinner belts. Uh, they don't dig into <laughs> my girth the way that the narrower ones do, and I do like to tighten up my waist belt a significant amount when I'm going any decent distance with a backpack. Those are the primary features of this pack. Now, as I stated, I purchased this to be a load hauler, and I've talked about possible limitations for space and things like that. I just happen to have a surplus hard box. Now, this is a decent sized hard box. It's 17 inches by 12 inches by 6 inches, which is 43 by 31 by 15 centimeters. So it's a decent sized box, has a decent capacity. I can fit all of my camera equipment in here. I could put any number of things in here. Anything that I need to transport in a way that the items will not be damaged. Now, that particular box is an ideal size to put inside this pack. As I mentioned before, the straps that are attached to the inside backboard, these are somewhat limited. They are designed to go around the IED jammer, which is significantly smaller than this box. It's not going to be any problem whatsoever for me to create an extender because I have the buckles, I have the webbing, and I will be able to wrap these around on the top and the bottom of this box to hold it in place. That's a double security measure because the second security measure will be the top buckles and this hard plate fits right over the top and it almost looks like on the exterior straps anyway it almost looks like this pack was made for this particular size of container it was not go ahead and snap these buckles into place I put two of my standard load cells inside this main compartment and the reason being is if you are going to transport anything in this pack with a load in it you're going to have to have that in there first because once you have these straps uh, tightened down and in position you're not going to be able to put anything in it's going to be too tight these back ones here These bottom straps you're going to see are really just going to touch the very bottom of this box. Now that isn't a problem either. I have all kinds of molly webbing on this back panel. I can very easily make additional straps to move up on this position here to go around and attach to this molly webbing. I can do that in any number of ways. If I wanted to, I could have webbing here, here, and here. It wouldn't matter. It just, you know, the security that you would want would be the, the amount of extra webbing that you would put on it. And as you can see, this is a fairly decent sized load. Uh, it's a, a decent accommodation of the pack to the, uh, the hard box. I'm going to go ahead and put it on and let you see what it looks like. I have the pack on. All of the straps have been adjusted. And it's a very comfortable fit. Um, 
since it was designed to be worn over body armor. It's a very small flat section, excuse me, <clears throat> a very small flat section on your back. You really, you only feel that small narrow section on your back right through here which is really different than carrying a regular pack. Um, I don't know <laughs> how this is going to feel while I'm hiking miles, uh, if it's going to be a good thing, a bad thing. It's just an observation. I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, possible uses for the lower cargo section, storage section, just with a couple of things that I have and discuss some other options and possibilities that we can add to this particular pack. Now this bottom section that has potential and due to a two compartment section which any of this material on the inside the dividers if you really had a need to or a desire those things could be removed. However, it's just about perfect for my battery case that I take into the woods with me all the time for my camera equipment. And if it's imperfect in the top one, it also fits very well in the bottom one. Uh, they are fairly snug which is good because you don't want stuff flopping around when you're out hiking. It's a, a load shift and it makes noise. So these two pockets down at the bottom, these two uh, openings, container areas in the bottom, they have potential, but you have to find <laughs> in your mind what that potential is. Uh, my rectangular mess kits, my rectangular esbit stove I just purchased, uh, they should fit in here just fine. So there's potential with this particular section here. Again, um, unless I can come up with a specific reason why I would want to retain these straps, I, I have um, two tens I purchased in England. And those tens were originally uh, I guess it'd be blasting caps or uh, detonators and it came with a little you know styrofoam tray that was inside of it, a little plastic tray I removed those and those are what I use for my fire kit those very easily could fit in there and since there are two separate ones these straps could hold those into position without them knocking around and making noise just hold them secure so there's potential for these there is, you know, fantastic potential here. And if, uh, for some reason, I felt that I could, needed to remove that center section, I could do that. Let me show you a couple of the other ideas I had for this pack. One of the features that the Mystery Ranch Crew Cab has that this does not is side panels. There are side panels that are attached to the frame and they will come and connect to the sides here so you can put looser items like load cells in uh, you know loose bags things like that and will hold them into position a little bit better this is very open so unless you have a container inside that's going to fit between the straps even if you add more straps to it you're going to have a very open area i have a lot of extra pouches and so I started playing around with some of the ideas. And one of the pouches is a multicam, or it would be multi-terrain pattern, Crusader II cook set pouch. It has molly webbing up here at the top, and I could fit that over the strap. And it could be added storage, but it's not going to do a good job holding this into place. It's open. So the idea for extra storage, it's fine, but as far as creating some type of a panel here, it doesn't work so well. So I went in to the Molly sustainment pouch. 
and uh, multicam, o OCP for the United States military. And it also has Molly attachments on it. And those Molly attachments do actually line up okay with these straps. And it would create a bit of a barrier or a panel to hold those items in. The last thing that I have, and I have two of all of these items, is an OCP waste pack. It comes with their, um, I forget what their new pack is called, but it's, it's, it's essentially the, the Molly pack, except updated. Now, where these straps come through also line up with the straps that are on the pack. You can see that. I can run these straps through the webbing here that accommodates the Molly straps and would hold it in position as well. The nice thing about this is once I got to where I was going, these could be removed and actually used as a waste pack to take little adventures with. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of the little drawbacks that can potentially occur with utilizing these types of pouches for side panels. On this side, I have the OCP Molly waste pack. And on this side, I have the Molly OCP sustainment pouch. As you can see, the waste pouch definitely fills the space much better than the sustainment pouch. Both of these, I'll show you the sustainment pouch first, accommodates the straps that are provided well. However, as you can see, the sustainment pouch is very low on the pack, leaving a good bit of space up here open. That could be a drawback. If I were to um, bring the bottom strap up just a little bit more, uh, the bottom strap here is pulling this down uh, just a little bit. It's very snug. Uh, I could lift that up and move it up a little bit. The waist pouch fits very well. And as you can see, fits the, the straps through the webbing that's provided very well. I'm going to go ahead and show you that. How I have that gone uh, through the webbing loops that are provided. They go right up through here and just uh, to save time I snaked the, or wove uh, the strap from the pack through uh, the molly webbing here. I very easily could remove the buckles and slide the webbing up through the loops that are provided and put the, uh, the buckles back on and it would be perfectly fine. The one drawback to both of these options is that they are not rigid. And if you do not have these things completely packed to where they are full and they um, sustain their own shape and keep their own shape, uh, you could have some problems with the potential of things working their way out the sides. Now, one thing that you can do is you can uh, reinforce the interior of any of these pouches that are soft pouches with something rigid. This just happens to be a political sign. It's made of corrugated PVC. This is very rigid. They just throw these things away when they're finished using them. And if election time, you can go around and uh, collect some of these because most of the times, like for this, it was a school levy. It passed. That's a one-time use. You can use that type of material for all kinds of projects for bushcrafting or wild camping. It's a good, sturdy material and it's free. Uh, you can purchase that material um, I know that uh, craft stores, uh, Hobby Lobby, places like that uh, will carry that in different colors. Uh, you can sand that 
and uh, spray paint it if you're worried about whatever color it is but it's going to be in the interior you very easily can create boxes of that stuff if you need to have rigid forms inside your pouches all the way around the bottom all the sides you could even uh, hinge the top to where you can slide stuff down inside the one thing you are going to have a problem with is the sound because if anything's loose in here it's going to bang on that and create a little, little bit of noise but there's all kinds of different ways that you can use um, different materials to soften that with uh, one time i used gorilla tape and believe it or not just putting a layer of gorilla tape on it silenced it quite a bit and it just uh, adds a little bit to the weight and it's uh, sort of expensive one thing you want to do if you're just going to be using one panel is you're going to want to round off the edges because this stuff, you know, it will eventually wear a hole through the fabric of whatever pack you have given enough time. So you round those off and you could also put some um, duct tape, Gorilla tape, 1000 mile an hour tape, any kind of tape on this to just uh, protect your pack from these sharp edges and they are fairly sharp you could very easily cut yourself like a paper cut on this stuff but that's be one uh, precaution that I would uh, tell you about just so that doesn't happen to you now I'm gonna go ahead and buckle this back up and put it on so you can see how this looks on my person now this is what the pack will look like if you try any of these side panel pouch options Some of the other options I explored were adding um, side armor panels to this that are, are they already have the molly webbing on them. Uh, they go on the side um, of the uh, armor plate carriers and they vary in height. And you know, I looked at some of those and um, I was also even possibly considering constructing my own rigid side panels just by utilizing uh, 500D Cordura nylon and basically making a pocket for the corrugated uh, PVC that I just showed you and uh, putting the molly webbing and things like that so I could add pouches and that that's a that's a possibility but it's a tremendous amount of work uh, that would go into it and when it gets right down to it um, if this was a larger pack that would definitely be able to carry a larger uh, load I would very strongly consider that the reason that I was holding back on some of these panels that would probably work pretty well wouldn't take much to adapt them to this particular pack is the price one thing I have noticed over the past year or so that surplus items are especially in OCP, Multicam, uh, MTP, very expensive. Um, they have gone up exponentially within the past year. Um, I don't really know why that's happening, but it's definitely occurring. Now, I remember when I picked up my um, ILBE pack, it was dirt cheap. And now, to get a new unissued <laughs> ILBE you're pretty much going to be paying full retail for it and uh, if you're, you're lucky enough to find one this pack I gave you the price range that it's selling for if by any chance you would consider that this would be something that you could actually use being brand new and really it does have great potential if what you've seen with this uh, would meet your needs now would be the time to purchase it I'm, I'm not in any way shape or form endorsing mystery ranch or anything like that um, I, I, I have nothing to gain from any of this other than sharing information I personally feel that for what I have it set up with right now this will do a particular task 
that none of my other packs can do. That is pretty much uh, that in a nutshell. I paid 200 for it, and um, if you look on the auction section on eBay, you very easily could get a new in the package um, pack, four or three, even cheaper. For my investment, for the potential that this pack has, and again, I have to put it through its paces. I have to really see if it can do what it can do. My first thoughts, it, it was worth it. And um, I'm going to put it through its paces and see what um, I can do. I still have a lot of refinement that I'm going to be doing as far as my makeshift accessories. I'm definitely going to be adding additional webbing and things like that. When I get all those final things done, I'm going to take it out to my secret fun spot. And that's why I originally purchased this to begin with, to be able to, to transport caches and things like that out there. I'll definitely show you all of the new modifications that I've done for it and talk to you about the whole development of it and the trial and error uh, that I go through with this pack. Well, folks, that's it for my introduction to the Mystery Ranch Thor 3. And it's a pack that was specifically designed for a very specific purpose that with a little ingenuity, a little creativity, can definitely be modified to work in a myriad of different ways. I'm pleased with it. I can't wait to get it in the woods and see how it performs. And I can't wait to get back with you and tell you what failed, what worked well, and what I still need to do. As always, folks, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.